I'd like to close this section by giving you some sense of the research frontier, uh, some of where we are and some of the open questions. Well, one of the first questions is, should we add more variables to this uh, system? Uh, for example, uh, you know, should we have not just dividend yields, but other variables, including more lags of the dividend yield or, or genuinely other variables? Yes, of course we should add uh, our, our variables. We, I didn't do the dividend yield because it was the best predictor or the only predictor. It's just a natural starting point uh, to then add more variables and see what that does. And there's a lot of mistakes here. P people say things like, oh, dividend growth isn't predictable and then be surprised when, when other variables do predict it. No, dividend growth isn't predictable from dividend yields, but it surely can be predictable if you have other variables. And in fact, it is predictable when you have other variables. A dividend yield regression without, without the CX, it isn't wrong, it's just conditioned down. But, uh, but more conditioning information uh, it can always give you more, more insights. So, uh, as an example, the discount rates reading has a, um, a regression I ran using Letow and Ludvigson's uh, CAY, consumption to wealth uh, variable. And uh, let's, let me just show you how that affects uh, these, uh, all these calculations as, as a taste of where we should go in the future once we get lots more variables in and digest what they all mean. So can more variables help to forecast returns? Here's the table uh, where I have now multiple regressions of all these things on dividend yields and CAY, and the answer is surely yes. So in a multiple regression, I just gave you the T statistics here for CAY, 3.19. The R squared rises from 0.09 to 0.26. The variance of expected returns rises from about 5 to about 9. CAY helps a lot to forecast returns. No question about it. Turned out CAY didn't do a whole lot to forecast dividend growth, but, but we'll look at that a little bit more carefully in a minute. Uh, dividend yields still are 0.94, very persistent. Uh, CAY is, um, is uh, not really well forecast by dividend yields. But CAY has a 0.65, so it's moderately persistent, but it comes back much more quickly. So CY is like a business cycle forecaster, and that's very exciting. That should give us the possibility to see business cycle movements and expected returns on top of the very slow movements tracked by the dividend yield. Well, let's go look at how some of the other uh, the calculations look. Here is a graph of a forecast on actual one period returns, just like I did for dividend yields. The red lines are the actual returns. These are one-year returns, so they're not seven-year returns, so they're very jagged. The dividend yields is the green line, and that shows you this long, slow-moving uh, thing that dividend yields tracks. It tracks well, uh, you know, in the 1990s uh, um, and, and then 2000s. You can see dividend yields is telling you bad returns, and on average we had bad returns, though, though a lot of noise. The, the multiple regression with CAY in it is the blue line, and you can see how the blue line is doing a wonderful job of tracking those one-year-ahead returns. So it's adding the business cycle components. It's adding high-frequency uh, return variation. And so it is, in fact, able to help uh, forecast returns. Other variables do help to forecast returns in addition to dividend yields. That was just a conditioned down representation, uh, not the be-all and end-all of return forecasting. Now, what does this do to our, our identities? You might say, wait a minute, we had an identity. Uh, return forecasts and dividend growth forecasts added up to one. How can anything help? And the answer is that they can help because uh, they just have to do it symmetrically. If, if CAY goes up and forecasts returns, uh, one period returns, it, and, but doesn't move today's dividend yield, then it's got to also forecast future other returns in the future or also forecast uh, dividends. What I was hoping was that CAY would, would rise in the bottom of a recession, and that would give us higher expected returns and higher dividend growth. Those two things would offset and not affect the dividend yield, and that would be the story. It turned out not to be the case, but that's at least a potential story. The identity allows for other variables to forecast returns if they also forecast dividend growth or if they also forecast returns at different horizons. So if we do our regressions, for example, here's a regression where we have a long-run uh, uh, dividend yield forecaster and a long-run some other variable. What are our identities going to tell us? Our identities are going to tell us, just as before, that the long-run dividend growth coefficients had up to 1, but the long-run uh, coefficients on the other variables have to add up to 0. So a variable that forecasts long-run returns must also forecast long-run dividend growth. And that's fine. That's great. 
Other variables, dividend growth can be forecasted. Other variables can help us see much more interesting dynamics uh, in, in everything we do. Now, uh, but how does it work out? Uh, in, in this case, uh, we saw that uh, CAY really changed our picture at the one-year horizon. How does CAY change our picture at, at the long horizon? How does CAY change our picture uh, of, of the um, of long-run expected returns and long-run dividend growth, which still do. ET now means conditioned on DP and uh, CAY. Uh, how does our decomposition of the variance of dividend yields differ now? Drum roll, please, for the next graph. There it is. Now, what I've plotted here is the actual dividend yield, and I've plotted the, uh, the expected return component of dividend yields one using just DP and one using DP and CA. Why? And you can see it hardly makes any difference at all. And the reason's fairly clear. Dividend yield is a very slow-moving uh, object. So dividend yields really affect the long-run return forecast. CAY uh, affects return forecast for a year or two, but that doesn't really add up much. So in, in this case, it made a big difference to returns one period returns, it didn't make a big difference to long period returns, and thus we are still seeing the same picture that, that the prices are all explained by the, by the dividend yield forecasts uh, of expected returns, the price dividend ratios. How does it affect the vector autoregression? Well, now we have three shocks, right? We can ask what happens if dividend growth moves, what happens if dividend yield moves, and what happens if CAY moves, not moving uh, any of those other two. These two first ones look just as they did before. Uh, the dividend growth shock, individually and cumulatively, pure random walk. The dividend yield shock, individually and cumulatively, that's just an expected return shock, a temporary component of the prices. The interesting thing here is what happens if CAY moves and dividend yields don't move? What does that mean? Uh, well, what that does is it, 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 sends, it sends returns up, returns come back down, and they go negative. And it didn't really do that much to dividends. In the context of the identity, CAY rising means expected returns are higher in the future, they're lower in the far future, without, any mu without much effect on prices uh, at all. Um, so we can, add, we can add other shocks, and in this case what it did is it changed the dynamics. It, it changed the, what we learned is that in recessions, there is a different time series pattern, a different uh, term structure of risk premiums. That's a word I think you're going to hear more of in the future, a term structure of risk premiums. That's what CAY did. The, the world is, is waiting for us to understand, uh, without fishing too much, what a whole bunch of other variables do on the right-hand side and how they'll affect the dynamics uh, and the business cycle correlations of expected returns in, in lots of interesting ways.